Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. We are a year-round talk series bringing you the best creative voices across film, television, and theater. And today we are so lucky to be joined by Ashley Walters, currently starring in Bulletproof South Africa. And now that you're diving this far into the show, I was actually really interested in, in the character work that you do before you step onto set to film and how that's really evolved since you first created the show and the way that you thought about character before you would go shoot scenes versus now when you step into it and you just know this character so intrinsically at this point yeah you pretty I mean you pretty much answered the question kind of for me and, and, I mean answer the yeah answer the question with your your question really um yeah because I mean in the beginning creating it um that helped a lot because literally we we created the the every fabric of these these two characters ourselves um and a lot of our our vision came from things that we've grown up watching i.e your, your lethal weapons your, your bad boys um kind of growing up watching those shows we wanted to bring a lot of the, the, those elements into this but our kind of our bottom line was to create two um really great role models um male role models we thought was lacking there was there was a lack of representation of those sort of um black male role models on, on tv um and that was kind of the heart of where we came from. So, you know, my character, Pike, um, being like, you know, the married family man dedicated to his wife, having a, you know, a, a, a pretty okay marriage, um, not too many, not too many bumps along the road. Um, and kind of, you know, Bishop, even though coming from a really frosty background, um, being fostered and going through all of that stuff, still having like a real moral, great, good moral center. Um, when it comes to law, when it comes to justice. Um, and those, those were, you know, the initial elements. I think as the series has gone on, um, obviously, like you said, we've been really, um, it's just become intrinsic for us, you know, it's just become a natural thing for us to kind of get into the characters that we play. Um, initially, you, we were seen as the opposite um, to, to the world as Ashley and Noel. So, you know, Noel was seen as the more kind of, um, family orientated guy, you know, by, by the public. And I was seen as the more, more of the bad boy because of my past. Um, and we, we wanted to flip that on the head with the characters, so we did. But now I think if you, if you watch the show from the beginning up until now, you see that the characters are starting to blend slightly. Um, and that has been like a, you know, a, a, a decision that we've kind of made with them. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we've kind of come a long way. I feel like with any characters on, on a kind of serial sort of platform, um, they should grow just as, as people naturally do. Um, and yeah, and they are, you know, they change. So um, yeah, you're gonna, I mean, if you, going forward, you see a lot of changes in them, a lot of, a lot of growth, you know what I mean? As, as, as humans, as people. And you were mentioning the idea of a, a moral compass between them before. And, and one of the things that you've always been really clear about with the show is that you never want them to break the law in order to achieve whatever they need to. Um, and so I was interested in, in how that's really continued to thread throughout the series, but also were there other elements of the show that were really non-negotiable to the two of you that you were like, this is going to be the framework for the characters and this is always going to be the case for them? Yeah, I guess you hit the nail on the head with the, the whole... Um not breaking the law. I mean, we, we, we bend it every which way we can, um, but we don't break it, you know, and, um, and, and we're pushed to the limit with that in, in, in the South Africa specials, because we're, we don't have any jurisdiction there. We're not actually, you know, legally allowed to be doing any of the stuff that we're doing. We don't have our team with us. So it takes a lot for us to kind of solve this case and get it done. So we definitely push boundaries with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and another one was just kind of um, the, you know, showing the love between us. I think that was really important for us. It was a really big thing. Showing the love between us and showing the love between the characters in general. Um, just the fact that, um, you know, Pike has, you know, a, a dark skinned black wife, you know, was really important and showing that that marriage is really solid and they support each other. Um, that, you know, there's a, a lot of stereotypes around those sort of relationships usually on the screen and we wanted to kind of flip that around. Um, but yeah, definitely the love between the two guys, just being open about their love for each other, you know, that brotherly love. Um, I feel like it's something that we, we hardly see on TV. When you get two characters, um, two alpha kind of sort of males, 
you know what I mean, in, in those positions, they're usually going at each other. Um, and our, our whole thing was that we wanted them to always to always back each other, um, regardless what the case is. Um, but that is also, I mean, that's going to be pushed to to to, to the test um, in, in in the next season as well. We've already started working on storyline, so we want to kind of test the push the boundaries as much as possible and show how much how much their love can take. And with the love between them, there's that, you know, even the fact that in the South Africa episodes that they can say the words, I love you out loud to each other, which is something that we so rarely see between male characters on screen. So it feels really profound with the two of you consciously thinking about that when when that line came up in the series and the fact that this isn't something that we see very often on screen. Yeah, but I mean, if I'm honest with you, it's, it's how Noel and I talk anyway. You know, we end conversations like that. Um, and you know it's, it's not weird to us you know like we have a we have a great love for each other and it, it, you know we're like we're like brothers we spend that much time together we spend that much time making the show we're very proud of what we've achieved together and um, and essentially the show is like our baby do you know what I mean and we 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 parent it together <laughs> so um, people may find that slightly weird um, my wife will probably will hear this and find that slightly weird as well, but, but it's the truth, you know, and that's how we feel. So a lot of those lines that, that pop in, they're not scripted lines, you know, it's, it's what we throw in um, and how we, we expect those characters to be because that's how we are. And a lot of this show is, the core of this show is based on our relationship, essentially, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and at the beginning of the show coming together, the two of you would kind of add in a lot of minute details that would show that connection between them. Maybe it's just like a look that they give each other or a little fist pump. Do you actually find that you need to do that less at this point because there's such a rapport and and you're almost you're almost able to look back at previous episodes and previous seasons and just be like, okay, like this is the way that they communicate with each other non-verbally so we can continue to throw this in and then maybe we'll add this one new element to their conversation. Yeah, basically. I mean, it, it, it just, it does, like you say, it does come so naturally. Um, it is what it is. And it, it, that's something that has been built because, I mean, we haven't, we haven't been as close as we are now forever. You know, our, our, our closeness started at when we started to create this show, really. Before that point, we were, um, we had quite a distance between us. We'd always known, we'd known each other for many, many years, but um never thought about working with each other, you know, in, in this sort of capacity. Um, and maybe there were a few elements that were, or people in between us that were kind of keeping us from, from each other in that sense. So um, the fact is when we got on first day of, you know, principal shooting um, for season one, um, I think we were filming in a car, we were filming the car scenes, car chase in the beginning. Um, I looked at him and I just realized like, I like this guy <laughs> because, um, you know, I've been listening to all the stories and stuff about him, you know, not knowing him myself. And he'd been listening to all the stuff that he'd heard about me. Um, but we sat down together and we actually realized that we were pretty much the same. You know, we've got so much in common. Um, and, um, and after that point, we were at ease and the, the relationship has just developed throughout filming. So, yeah, we are at the point where we kind of, you know, even when we're improvising and we're going off script and stuff like that, it's very rare that we kind of miss a beat because um, because we're, yeah, we're just clued up like that. Yeah. And when you were first creating the show together, you know, it, the genesis of it was you coming to the table with an idea. And then Noel was the one who really had a little bit more experience at that point in terms of figuring out what you needed for development and writing and producing. Um, and when you look back to those coffee shop meetings on Tottenham Court Road, how do you look at it now in terms of just all the things that you really had the opportunity to learn from him working on working on that part of the process with him early on and the things that you now feel really confident and comfortable in doing yourself as a producer on the show? Show, as a writer, as a creator? Yeah, I'm a, if I'm, I'm, a, I'm a changed man, if I'm honest, from the whole thing. Um, before that point in time, I was used to waiting for my agent to call, um, say you got a job, you know, and then I'd go and do it, and then I'd be waiting for the next one. Um, I think Noel comes from a place, obviously, where he's had to create his own work pretty much from the beginning of his career. So he had a lot of experience, and... Um, I think that's kind of, you know, we've helped each other in, in, a, in, in a lot of ways in that sense. And he's definitely helped me with understanding about, you know, taking a bit more control of my own destiny when it comes to what I do. So it was off the back of um, 
of creating the show with him that um, I started my own production company and started working on my own projects. And he still today is like a huge um, mentor for me when it comes to what I'm doing. You know, he has a lot of involvement in, in what happens in my production company just by giving me advice um, and support. Um, so, yeah, it, it's really changed me kind of. I've done a complete, what would you call it, 360, 180, whatever, um, and kind of thrive now of, uh, of writing and creating and doing stuff like that. Um, and I think I was quite I was quite a quiet person. I didn't really voice my own opinions um, in a lot of things that I, I do. So even stuff that I don't produce now, I'm not um, involved in on that side of things. I'm just acting in. I still have a bit more of a voice and I'm still trying to implement a lot more of my, um, my ideas and creativity in, into everything that I do. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, I, I've got to be happy with what, what comes out at the end. Um, and the worst thing in life is to, you know, be silent um, when you, you feel you should say something, um, get to the end of it and regret it. Uh, I don't want to do that. And in diving into the South Africa episodes of the show, I wanted to talk a little bit about the stunt work because there's even more of that happening in these episodes. And, and you've, you've talked in the past about how when you first began filming the show that you would almost close your eyes at the sound of the bullet sound effects um, yeah. because it, it is a jarring sound to suddenly hear. But obviously you had to become adept at that really, really quickly because it's part of your character's everyday life. So how did you go from that point of, of hearing the noises and your body having a physical response to really making sure that you could push through it and have that adeptness come come forward on screen if i'm honest with you i don't think i've managed it yet but um i mean that's me just being honest but uh i think the directors pick the the best clips <laughs> as they should um but yeah i think it's just a case of the more you do it the easier the easier it becomes um it's such an unnatural sound and um, initially when we were shooting it was a, it was a lot worse now we use a lot more um, sound effects and special effects to add on after and post but in the beginning we were you it was genuinely just raw blanks you know and, and at any given time it could be like seven people shooting at once um, and you'd have to be confident in that space um, so what we did in the beginning was we did a lot of um, you know target practice a lot of shooting practice um, at some of the police ranges um, in the UK um, just to get ourselves used to it and you know on set as well like letting the, the stunt guys letting us have uh, the armors letting us shoot a bit before we film just to get that, that comfortability with it um, yeah but I guess it just says a lot about me because I, I, I think Noel, Noel's never had really had that issue but I'm, 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 I'm a bit more of a wuss in that sense and with the armorers that work on the show, you know, part of what they're doing is really making sure that all the details of the weaponry that you feature is really authentic as well. So were there any shifts and changes in shooting the episodes in South Africa, even just in terms of, okay, this is this is what we're going to include in this scene. This is how this is going to work. And, and then really kind of bringing a local lens to the details in that aspect of the show. Yeah, definitely. The, our, our South African stunt team that we had, they were, they were amazing. Um, really, really kind of detailed with everything that they do. Um, and yeah, I mean, we definitely, when it came to, to firearms and et cetera, yeah, they, they had our back on all of that. Um, and, you know, Noel's the sort of guy that will sit, sit for hours and decide which gun he's using for a scene or whatever. I'm more this type of guy that would be like, you know, what do you think um, I should be using? So I, I, took, I took their lead on, on those sort of things, but definitely the stunt team just in general um, were amazing and we were we had the we were able to take our stunts and our action in, in the South African series to another level just because of the, the the people that we were working with the place that we were um, and how much they were willing to kind of let us get involved um, you know and this is no disrespect to to our stunt team over here because they're amazing as well but um, I guess the laws are different. Um, so, you know, or maybe not, and we just thought they were, but um, we were allowed to kind of get away with a lot more of the, I did a lot more driving, you know, a lot more of the, the actual stunts, um, uh, the physicality and everything was, was done by ourselves. So, um, and that, you know, it makes it a lot easier for, for the viewer to watch rather than having 
you know, spotting that there's some random guy pretending to be me. Um, so, yeah, it was really cool. And you, you, have, you have to trust the people that you're working with. And we, we did trust them a lot. Yeah, do you, I mean, do you find in general that as the show has gone on and the two of you have been able to step into more of the stunt scenes, that it allows you to create even more character moments within those scenes? Because like you said, you're not suddenly having to have someone else come into that moment. You're really able to get the camera much more close up with the two of you. And, and you're shooting so much coverage as well, because you're, you're, you're looking at like three to five cameras for a lot of those shots as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It just but yeah, it makes it makes life a lot easier. Like I said, for directors, you sound like a director yourself. You know, you know all of this stuff. So, um, yeah, hundred percent, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, um, it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot more fluid. And um, we're quite when it comes. I mean, when it comes to script, like I was saying before, we we love to improvise. Um, so you know, it means that it needs to be us a lot of the time to get that right vibe. Um, the right feeling um, from the action as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm just amazed by what we were allowed to do and just the space that we have to do it. Um, just it just creates a, you know, for us it just creates a fluidity throughout throughout the show that we feel needs to be there for the audiences to enjoy it as much as they do. I also really love the way that you've used South Africa as a location. It's not just they go on holiday and then they end up embroiled in a case. It, you know, you start out location wise in kind of more of a tourist hotspot, which is where they would naturally land at the beginning. And then you really take it location wise out into communities and into slightly more rural areas um, and, you know, more desolate areas of South Africa. So you really show a lot of different aspects of, of what the country is as well. Was that something that, even when you were all coming up with the idea and, and thinking about the setting, that it was really important to show a lot of different aspects of, of where you were going to take these characters. Yeah, definitely. I felt, yeah, it, has, it had to, you know, where we were shooting, it had to be reflected through, you know, the show. I mean, it would have been stupid of us to kind of um, film everything on, on Table Mountain and, um, <laughs> do you know what I mean, um, in Cape Town by, by the bay or whatever. Um, yeah, we, it definitely meant that we had to utilise our our full environment um, for many reasons, because, I mean, a lot of it for us was about showing what life is like out there for a lot of people. Um, we were very lucky to be, you know, staying in some luxury apartments and, you know what I mean, being kind of in our own little bubble away from a lot of the townships and whatever else. But the fact is they, they are there. Um, and usually, you know, a stone's throw away from, from the places that we were staying. Um, so it meant that we went into the townships. I mean, even when we weren't filming, we spent, we spent time in, in the townships, visiting people, visiting nurseries, um, and bringing our kids in out there as well, and our wives, and just kind of trying to delve a bit more into the community because the biggest, uh, the most eye-opening thing about South Africa is the... the huge disparity between you know the rich and the poor um and i mean some the, the way that some people are living in these townships is um you know it makes you want to cry like just just seeing it firsthand um and there's pretty much as as you know a couple of boys from from london there's not a lot we can do to to change but um but we tried to do as much as we could while we were there uh, on the ground and brought people into from the communities into the show as much as possible um but i guess you know the, the the great thing about it is that it taught us a huge lesson about um being happy with what you have you know i, I think us westerners are always trying to um get more you know create more buy more and whatever else and you see people over there with nothing that are pretty much much more happier than we are um so it's, it's a lesson learned yeah. And one of the aspects of your character is obviously out of the two of them, he's the one who sometimes needs a little bit of a nudge and, and very much kind of when he walks into any sort of new situation has a little bit of a mask up at first because he's he's observing and he's trying to take everything in and he's trying not to give anything of himself away. And so I was interested in how you really take that detail into so many scenes and, and think about those first few seconds whenever he's interacting with someone and the way that he's just constantly reading other people. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's the character, but I guess it, um, it's not really a conscious thing. It's more, 
I think that's a bit of Ashley, um, if, I, if I'm honest. I think you guys give us a bit too much credit sometimes. <laughs> you know, a lot of that is is part of my personality and a lot of my personality is is Pike, really, at the end of the day. So um, those things generally come naturally. I feel like um, also as well, I mean, that's coupled with the fact that um, out of the two, he's the guy that is thinking about things um, a lot more than, than Bishop. Bishop is gun ho you know, um, likes to make decisions quickly, but he wants to take more time. And I guess he, that comes from, look where, where they always end up, you know, when they make, do make rash decisions. So it does, does take him time. But um, I, think in the, I think in the South Africa um, season, he's, he's, he's a lot more like Bishop than, than, than usual. Um, and I guess that kind of plays into what's coming next in, in, in season four. Um, there's going to be like a, a huge shift in, in, in characters. On a, on a separate note, you've talked in the past about your experience of, of working on Get Rich or Die Trying and how when you first came out and started working on that project, you were finding it a little bit difficult to, to connect and, and find your character and you were internalizing things a little bit and, you know, even had conversations with Jim Sheridan, who was directing the film, who was like, I don't know if this is working. I don't know if we can use these scenes. And, and I think it's really a testament in the way that you managed to, to kind of come out on the other side of that. And so I was interested in, in conversations that you had with Jim Sheridan around that and the way that you really managed to then take that note, take that feedback that you were getting and really just kind of push through and, and find that performance in the movie. Yeah, I guess that that is just down to understanding what sort of platform I'm on. Um, I guess when a lot of my work up until doing Get Rich or Die Trying had been... Um, me doing very understated performances, um, very reserved performances. I guess that is where I started. And that's kind of always my instinct as an actor um, is to be as minimal with it as possible. Um, when you're going to the kind of Hollywood world, when you're going to the American sort of environment, um, it's, not a, it's not as respected as it is over here. And I think that was a, a huge issue was kind of, I think a lot of directors in the States find it hard to see what I'm doing, um, I guess. Um, and it's something I quickly had to learn with, with Bulletproof and working with Nolan as well, was that this wasn't, you know, this show isn't top away. You know, it's not about being um, in your mind all the time and whatever. It is about expression. It is fun. It is about jokes, it is about laugh, you know, it is about action and, and being quite big with your performance at times. Um, and I guess I, I, I've got there now, you know, but in, in, in the beginning I was, I was finding my feet, um, but it's, it, it, it took me a while. Yeah. And when you look back at, at kind of when you first started coming into the industry, you know, you you studied at Sylvia Young Performing Art School and you've, you've also talked a little bit about how that was a bit of a dichotomy for you because you were going and taking all of those classes and studying performing arts during the day and then going home and feeling like that wasn't something that you could share with people around you at the time and and how because of that, the vulnerability side of being an actor was something that you had to figure out and navigate. So how did you kind of become more comfortable with that side of things for yourself as an actor? Because the job requires so much of that from you. Um, I guess I just got over it with time. Um, and I, I, I guess some of the success um, helps you to, to understand why. You know, I think when I was going through kind of hiding um, what I used as expression from people around me. Um, you know, it, it didn't feel like it was something viable as a job at that point. It didn't feel like something I was going to continue for the rest of my life, you know, feed my family with or whatever. And um, the craft has become, you know, a huge part of my life now. Um, and I respect it a lot more. Um, and I guess I have to accept as well, and other people have to accept that, you know, I'm not here to just play or be the for them to see me in roles that they would like to see me in. I'm here to challenge myself on a daily basis. I'm still working out who I am. 38 years old, you know, a, a father of eight and a husband 
Um, I'm still on a daily basis working out the person that I am. And I think that's an ongoing experience in life. So like I was saying, like way before, um, change is normal. Um, and yeah, it's definitely been happening for me, especially over the last year. Yeah. Well, the South Africa special is is such a wonderful escape and, and joy for all of us to be able to watch. So thank you so much for sharing all of that. And thank you so much for this conversation with us, Ashley. No problem. Thank you for having me. Cheers.